Well, well, well. Welcome back, you patient penguins. It was well worth the wait, as we've got a big one coming up next. The battle for the intergalactic galaxy, the Alliance versus the Empire. Oh boy, one of the lamest jokes ever, Blaze. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Are you pumped up for our first Alliance game of the day? Yeah, we'll have to check it out, see if the Empire can strike back after Alliance uh, opens Whoa. up with their first pick here. I don't know. I... Star Wars references, it's, it's like what I've been born for, but I'll, I'll try to keep it down for those that aren't uh, a big fan of the series. Yeah, I, I still had you muted, but uh, we had a little little hiccup there where the, the local kind of bugged out a little bit, and uh, the file was actually exactly 322 kilobytes. It was meant to be, Blaze. Awesome. Oh, man, what, what an omen. I hope that uh, is a sign that this will be a game of action, a game of strategy, and um, it'll be, be one for the ages. So I was muted with that last little bit. You were, huh? I was muted with that last little intro there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well then I, I get I was... to re reuse my joke then, I guess I have Oh to. no, not that part. No, when I, okay. was, when I was cursing at XSplit, I mean, I was muted so you couldn't hear me. Excellent, okay. Excellent. Well, as, long as, as long as that part's out of the way. Release the hounds. All right, so Alliance, they start off with old Razor. Going to give him the whips. Tinker. Uh-oh. Oh, that's going to be a good one. Um, yeah, Tinker <laughs> going to be opened up. And uh, this is, uh, this, there's a lot of potential with the, the way Empire like to run their Tinker and particularly like what they can accomplish with it. Uh, we also get to talk uh, when he comes online about his fully armed and operational battle station. But uh, yeah, for right now, uh, he'll just be trying to farm up those BOTs and we'll see when the lasers do actually start flying. Of all the heroes to be picked up here, he, he actually is a battle station. He is essentially a Death Star in a man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Yeah, I, I just want to like name everyone after like a, a, a spaceship now. Yeah, you can do it, Luke. <laughs> Let's look at the bets here. Uh, see what everyone's working with. Um, Empire, did they just win against Fnatic? They were playing in the Moscow the tournament. Whoa, to Empire actually have the bet favorites right now. 60-40 in favor of Alliance. Very interesting. The fans have spoken. Yeah, I mean, uh, Alliance, compared to what it was, I, I definitely still think they're kind of Ten seconds beneath how, where they have been in the past, but that doesn't mean that they can't uh, show some sudden improvements. Remaining. I mean, they've always had plenty of skill behind them. Lotus been, and Ake have been in the scene for a very long time, very experienced players, and Admiral Bulldog, although he's uh, still relatively fresh by comparison to most players, he still has a ton of skill behind them. So the addition of Misery, the addition of Chessie, it, it definitely hinders them for a short time span. That doesn't mean they can't bounce back. They can't uh, actually come out to be the stronger team. And, and we'll see if Empire are going to go along with those bets and uh, get those expectations out. Uh, yeah. It's kind of weird to see Solo, okay, Han Solo on the wrong team. But other than that, it works out. <laughs> Five seconds oh my god. All right, well... Both teams taking their time here, very cautious uh, in what they choose to draft. And pretty standard openers. Alliance will grab their Bulldog Hero, the Nature's Prophet. And, you know, I, I have to say, I still don't understand the deal with this Euro Nature's Prophet build. The uh, double null tally into Blade Mail, huh. into Maelstrom. I don't think Bulldog has been doing it. Bone 7 has been the big culprit doing it uh, in competitive recently. He's only run it a few times, but um, I, I, I feel like I still just don't get it. Every time I've seen that build in a competitive game, it is done next to nothing, and then he gets a Maelstrom, and then that's when Nature's Alliance Prophet really starts to come online. To yeah, well, Bulldog said his AMA that he sees where it can work in some games, and he thinks it is a valid build, but we haven't really seen it from him very much. And okay. in my opinion, I just I have to say that it, it works well against a lot of heroes that we're seeing right now. Skywrath Mage is a, a big one with his Mystic Flare, but I mean, really any of the ones that just have lots of AoE damage and explosions seconds, and such. But I have to say that I don't really feel that it's Five Nature's Prophet that has to go. It could be any hero. I mean, Nature's Prophet's strength gain isn't that great. I think it's 1.8. There are a dozen other ranged intelligence heroes who are even tankier than that. Like even Jakiro could probably benefit from it more. But that being said, it does have some offensive components, the attack damage, the intelligence. Um, so it's kind of like going halfway between an Orchid and, uh, I don't know, a utility pickup. And uh, you get some damage out of it, but you also... I don't know. I, I just like maxing. I think that getting a lot of no talismans in general is going to be good. I don't think the blade mail really makes that build 
perfect, but if you went like double nail tally treads and maelstrom, then you'd probably be getting something similar out of it. I definitely agree. It, it's weird, and I could talk about it for like an hour, but I really, until we see it a lot more, we're not going to know if it's just going to be a symptom of what's going on as far as the, the results with it, or if it's actually going to be something that people will be looking to do to pull forward in the future. Yeah, we're planning on asking uh, Wagamom about it a little bit uh, in the studio later today. And I, I did some research last night, and I think it's about 50-50 in competitive. It uh, isn't a huge sample, but uh, it does does win some games. But regardless, we'll move on here. It looks like Alliance will be commencing the pushing. They'll grab that uh, twin-headed dragon we've come to love and enjoy. And Empire will grab their second support in the Visage. So a nice little bit of crowd control, some mobile wards, but great pairing with the Tinker because, of course, you can BOT to those pesky little familiars and... That means Tinker can pretty much be anywhere he wants on the map, and uh, it is pretty hard to deal with. Yeah, I'm curious to see how the laning phase will work out, what uh, core here they're going to put alongside this tri-lane, because uh, Visage and Earthshaker, they're good together in general, but they want a little bit more damage on the table, so you can really get the most out of the soul assumption. So I would say if they can get a very active core hero to st uh, start off, they could even go for an aggressive tri-lane, and that would give Tinker more options as far as where he's going to be laning and make sure that there's less pressure on him, because if you're aggro trying, Alliance have to play defensively and try to force the 3v3, you're knowing when the supports are roaming away, and that's going to cause no end of grief. But I love the Centaur and Synergy going with the Stampede plus Familiars. They're able to go wherever the heck they want very quickly and get the really powerful stuns off. But the last thing I'll mention about it is that Visage is really good against Razor offensively. He does take some hits from the passive every time he casts a spell on him, but even still, the big thing about Razor is he puts out a lot of damage, but he dies pretty quick, and the Soul Assumption is one of the better tools to deal with that. Yes, sir. And uh, worth mentioning here very quickly, Mag is doing the drafting for Empire today, and it is back in the hands of Loda on Five Team Alliance. As we mentioned, I think last we saw Alliance, Chessie was drafting for a little while, and uh, it has Reserve gone back time. the way of Loda. As uh, the overlay covers it up, and people just like to know what's going on. Alliance will think about their fourth pick here. They will need uh, either a mid or position one, and uh, another support here. Razor is a little bit flexible. I reckon he'll be headed to the mid lane, but time will tell. They pick up the Team Witch Doctor Empire and perhaps Alliance angling for a faceless Void pick here. He hasn't been banned out yet, and Empire may just want to take him out of the pool with their fifth and final ban. I'm really worried the Stinker might get too out of hand. Right now, his options for BOTing into trees, either with, as you mentioned, the Familiars or just with a Blink Dagger, uh, they don't have that much that'll easily deal with it. They do have Clear Vision via the Sprout as well as the Plasma Field. But as far as like actually getting long range stuns, you usually look to heroes like maybe Venge with their longer range swap. You can pin her down, with, pin them down with Clockwork, Alliance Doom, things like that. Bad. Right now, Witch Doctor Jakiro, they can t obviously cancel TPs, but it's delayed. It's they're not as quick in getting there. They're not mobile heroes. Mm -hmm. The Pugna is an interesting band from Empire. Obviously, they're worried about the push, but. That would be a very seconds, squishy maybe. lineup for Alliance. And against like a Tinker and a Centaur, I feel like as soon as Centaur got Blink, Five a lot of these heroes remaining. would have just been food. And I think something mm -hmm. more like a Doom or a Faceless Void are what Alliance have in mind exactly. with uh, with their final pick. But time will tell. They will have that luxury Team of the 10th pick Turn in the match, so they can react to whatever Empire picks up here. They ban out the Viper, and now it's just about the position one for Team Empire. I guess there is some flexibility here. They could opt to safe lane the Tinker and grab a mid-hero, but... Um, We'll see. Viper is a smart band, though. One of few heroes that can actually give Razor a run for his money in a 1v1. Yeah. Right now, I don't think they have to worry about the push nearly as much. The Tinker and Earthshaker give great turtle presence, March Machines, Fisher, uh, good ways of just keeping things alive for a long time. Yes, the three central heroes for Alliance's lineup are very potent in a push situation, but going all-in push would be putting way too many eggs in one basket. Picking up the Pugna against the Tinker, uh, just continue to march and it gets very difficult to actually guarantee more than just the outer towers. So I think Lions still want to go and get something that'll benefit longer term from the a goal that they'll be getting out of the towers that they do claim. And maybe we could see Loda on one of her his older hero pickups. So Aluna's pretty good mid to late game against the uh, familiars with the Moonglaves. Mm -hmm. um, it does have some issues against Centaur Visage, I guess, but... 
I don't know. As long as he picks up something that can scale well, I think that Alliance are going to go for something that isn't so all-in on the early game. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right, because they just don't have much to deal with that Tinker late. Empire, they'll grab the Gyrocopter, an interesting choice. A hero that not many teams are running right now. I think he's kind of renowned as um, pretty garbage tier by a lot of teams, but Empire, one of few that have been running him, that will be your, um, your silent hero, most likely. I know that's a, a hero player pairing that is pretty potent, and we've seen him be pretty successful with Gyro, gyro albeit, so albeit uh, he's nice. kind of out of the meta right now. Alliance, Huge fan. They pick up the Rogue Knight. I, I would shake Sven's hand right now. This is awesome. This uh, is a hero that can add to the push with Warcry, but still can scale really late. They don't necessarily have the setup for the AoE, but the cool thing is, even if uh, Team Empire aren't clumping up, then Witch Doctor and uh, maybe a right-click build from the Fearing can just exploit the heroes that are all by themselves. So, you have... A couple of heroes that can single people down, and then you have the Sven and the Jakiro when they clump up to really dish out that massive AoE damage. So, uh, column A, column B, it doesn't matter. They're going to be able to make a pretty big impact. And uh, in general, this hero is not going to be kited all that much when the Stampede's not up. When the Stampede's up, he's going to be nearly useless. But if he maybe picks up a blink and is able to get over the Fisher, then he should still be able to stay on target very effectively. And obviously, they have a lot of good slows and stuns. So good all-around hero, can go late, and uh, certainly can contribute for the early push. Yes, sir. Well, should be interesting. A couple of fun heroes that we don't get to see all too often. So at the very least, it'll be interesting on that front. Resolution Tinker, that is that uh, really scary combo we've seen uh, in Star Ladder so far, where Resolution has just been out of control. Of course, Alliance will probably have some tricks up their sleeves to make sure he doesn't totally ball out of control, but we have seen a lot of Empire's earlier games in this group stage uh, get, get pretty ridiculous as Resolution grabs momentum very early on. And they tend uh, to, maybe not a 4 protect one, that's a bit strong, but they tend to assist that mid lane quite a bit, stack up for the Tinker, and make sure he has everything he needs to have early BOTs and get that snowball rolling. Dyer will start off with an Observer Ward in the Radiant Jungle, but Ake standing nearby does get pinged out, and uh, they may try and sentry this down. Looking at, uh, is that, oh, Misery on yeah. this Sven. Whoa. They swapped it out. Jakiro is now played by Loda. This was not how they picked it up originally, but yeah. about 10 seconds of the game, they swapped it out. And uh, yeah, Stout Shield and Clarity, so it's a little hard to say if he's going to be full prime farm priority or a temporary asset. In mm -hmm. either case, uh, for now he has only one stun available with his current level of stats, but one stun might just be enough for them to get a first blood and for him to start snowballing pretty far forward with uh, early boots of speed. The battle begins. Yeah. I, I'm not sure what to make of this. I'm kind of curious how the lanes will exactly settle down, uh, but Alliance will pull some some player role swaps as well. We'll be Chessy in the bottom lane on the position one Razor. He has been tending to play mid. It'll be the Bulldog headed solo mid on the Nature's Prophet. He is starting off with a null tally of all things, so there you go. Aggro try for Alliance. Ake on the support Witch Doctor. It will be Misery on the Sven and Loda on the Jakiro. I still think it'll be a farming Sven in the position one. They're just switching it up with Loda playing support and uh, Misery, the farmer. We'll see. Maybe it will be a position one Jakiro. Time will tell as we move into the lane. Based on the rotations, I guess it is Loda that will be sticking true to his cause and racking up the last hits here. They're getting aggressive, looking for a potential first blood on to always want to fly. They do put down a Radiant Observer here to block the pull camp, and they'll head back to the lane and pressure silent. But there you go. It's Loda farming away. Interesting stuff from Alliance here, Blaze. Yeah, I mean, there's a possibility for a load of just going to be going straight for like a Basilius Mech Rush and try to go for that really early push momentum. Uh, obviously, the Sven and Witch Doctor have their own levels of kill potential, but yeah. they really have to have some major intentions with the first item or two from Jakiro in this case. I mean, we see often an available Discord is picked up on the hero, but not in this game. There's very little magic damage that synergizes. There's plenty fr from each hero, but it's not enough to say, I need a number one position Veiled Discord Rush. So, in this position, maybe he goes for a Mechanism 4 Staff Bassy build, and they just go for really push emphasis, but I'm, I'm not too certain, to be honest. Yeah, it's definitely not what we would have predicted, that's for damn sure. On the dire side, uh, Empire doing things a little bit more straightforward. Han Solo here on the support, Earth Shaker, always want to fly on the Visage, and of course Silent on his Gyrocopter. Resolution headed to the mid on the Tinker, and in the off lane, that is Mag playing on all Centaur, galloping around against the Razor. So Empire definitely doing things a much more in a much more straightforward fashion. What are your thoughts overall about the support Sven? I like him in the position one. He can certainly scale well, but 
it seems more often than not the position four slash position five Sven um, can it, it just he doesn't he, he, he struggles. It's Strug City. Oh, Loda almost caught inside the fissure. Probably would have been a first blood there, but we'll just barely end up on the other side. Yeah, I mean, we haven't really seen this as a reliable hero role since 2011. Sven Lena Rome was really popular in TI1, but it's it's been a long time since then. There have been a lot of heroes introduced, and I don't see exactly what he brings that they don't. Like, if you have an alchemist in his place, for example, you still get a lot of, oh, nice Fisher. Yep, blocks out Ake. Ice Path will connect onto Silent. Ake is isolated, but they eat the trees and they make a path for him. Though Misery will path block him as he says, hey, let's get aggressive here, guys. I think we might be able to kill something. They will think about it. Loda, only level two right now. Ice Path and Liquid Fire on him. They'll move into the jungle. Ice Path connects onto Always oh, Wanna nice Fly. Fisher. Another beautiful Fissure separates them apart. Loda will go down for the Visage. Ake and Misery will have to walk around the Fissure. But in comes Bulldog. They'll find Always Wanna Fly. And this could be your first blood, but who's going to get it? Bulldog getting low. He does draw the first blood onto the Visage. He survives for now. Solo coming in. Looking for the kill. Will find it, but it may cost him his life. And one more auto attack from the Jakiro. He moves into Fog. Eats a tree. Oh, no. Solo, he doubles back. I think he was going to fall anyhow, but that makes it an easy kill for Alliance, and they will get the first blood, and whoops, sorry about that. Get the first blood, and it ends as a two-for-one exchange. Oh. Misery loses his clarity to a cent wandering centaur creep, but I'm sure Ake will help him out in just a moment here. Uh, really mana-reliant early game is fun, because, as I mentioned, he only has one stun. 140 mana cost, and his base pool right now is 208 at level 3, so it's a little awkward for him. I don't know if he's going to go for that Soul Ring build to make sure that he could spam it, or he's just going to build up int treads and uh, use that whenever he's casting, kind of toggle that. Either way, um, it's a nice turn on the fact that, like I said, Warcry is a great pushing tool. A lot of people don't look at it that way, but you give a huge boost of armor to all the creeps, all the heroes nearby, and uh, nice movement speed to initiate as well. So it's interesting. It's dynamic, and uh, I like to see th things that are a little bit new. We do see Chessie down on Mag. He's trying to finish everything off, but five seconds from that plasma field, looks like he's not going to try to commit underneath. I actually think he might have been able to yeah, just bottle, move f forward, and under the tower get the plasma field kill, but more interesting stuff is happening in mid. Less theoretical and more death. Yeah, but Bulldog and Misery doing what they can. I don't know if they'll secure the kill here. Mag rotating over the plasma oh. field for a double kill. Oh, Chessie with the great rotation will make it an easy set of kills. It looked like Empire may be able to get away by the skin of their teeth there as uh, Resolution was kiting all over the place. Okay. Oh, Jesse cleans no, it up no, now no. up top. Ake, okay, he'll get completely isolated in. Rocket Barrage makes that another easy kill for Empire. So two to four now as we approach the five minute mark. Already quite a bit of action, but Alliance are reaping the benefits with a pretty decent uh, experience and gold lead. I have no idea why you make that movement as a solo witch doctor all up there on your own, but I guess he was trying to leech experience from neutral pulls, and eh, in the end, uh, he does take a tumble. So a little bit of gold going the way of Empire, but uh, they need momentum on this gyro. He wants movement speed. They want to pursue right onto Loda. He's tanky, but is it enough? No. Certainly not. Assumption. Yep. Soul assumption there with plenty of follow-up damage, and that will get Empire one step closer to leveling out that kill score as they finish off the position one Jakiro. Looking at Resolution in the mid lane, he picks up his Soul Ring recipe now, and that kill will slow him down quite a bit. Grabs an early point in Rearm, and is going for the March Machine build. So, not the fastest start for Resolution, but still doing okay with 20 CS under his belt. Up top, we'll see more initiation. Misery goes in with the Storm Bolt onto Silent. Bulldog Ultimate flying through. He'll TP up, and that'll secure the kill onto the Gyro. Now, always want to fly, stuck inside the Sprout. He will be isolated, and they will dive this tower with the sustain from Ake. Well, actually, it's just Bulldog and Loda diving the tower. They walk right into Solo. He takes the totem stun. Now an Ice Path connects. Maybe Solo will be in some trouble here. Uh, he certainly will. He gets off another set of stuns. Always want to fly. Comes in with the nuke, but not enough damage for the kill. They lose their Earthshaker. Mag coming in with the double edge to finish off Bulldog, but there's an Ice Path to take down the Visage. Now it's Mag versus the World. Is Silent. TP's to the Tier 2. The Stampede has been used to get Silent into the fray that much more quickly. Another double edge out onto Ake. It's chaos here in the top lane, and a fairly even exchange at that. Silent just barely jukes the ice path. Call down, and a fissure. Wow. It's a double kill for Silent. Down goes Sven, and down goes Jakiro. And that's enough to tip the scales as Empire come out ahead in that one. Yeah, and Razor's really not able to do that much to the bottom tower in the meantime. Like, he didn't rotate up, obviously, but uh, Bulldog's going to try to help him out with this. With three points of nature's call. They've got Basilius on each of them, actually, but in either case, they really want this tower. If they don't get this tower in exchange for the losses they suffered on top lane, then they are going to be f pulling very far behind. I mean, the Tinker, uh, as you mentioned, had a slow start, but 
uh, the soul ring, the space that he was created for him, he's able to kind of build up and a couple more stacks, and that'll be his BOTs. Yep, it looks like this bottom attack. tower will be defended by Mag, the level 8 centaur, but only so much he can do against these three heroes. No other heroes will rotate, Dyer's and it will be a fallen tower, tower, so at least the Lions been. find something out of that space that was created. Ake will hold the mid lane and get a little bit of experience under his belt, moving towards level 6, and of course that death ward on uh, old witch doctor there. Silent, or pardon me, Solo is almost level 5, so he's doing all right on this Earthshaker for now. But Razor is still top in the charts in terms of farm. Chessie has had a lot of space while they've been skirmishing up top, and he is still that last hit leader. Radiant's Mag here about a third of the way to the Blink attack. Dagger, so still pretty decent for him. 2 1 and 1, and has found 16 last hits. All things considered, the Centaur has had a pretty good time, and I think he will be crucial for some of these mid game tempo controls while that Tinker is still. Uh, trying to come online. Dire Side has not had any opportunity to stack the Ancients, so uh, Resolution won't have that uh, big fatty Ancient stack to rely on to make up for some of this lost farm, but he's doing a good, a good job in the jungle. A triple stack here in the big camp, and he's been stacking up the medium camp here and farming very effectively. Already 800 gold on the way to his BOT recipe. Mm -hmm. There was an attempt at uh, dropping down a nice little lane ward for Chessie to keep farming aggressively, but there was a sentry already in place. So they were able to take that off the field, easy 50 gold for Mag there. He, there is a haste room bottled up for the Razor, but at the same time the Stampede's still up for Empire, so they should be able to kind of control the engagements just as effectively. Some nice push coming in the mid lane, Loda with two points in Liquid Fire, but it's going to be Chessie to dive deep and push Solo back, trying to prevent Radiant's the Fisher counter push. Yep, and meanwhile in the top lane, always want to fly and silent are pressuring this tier 2. Dyer's TP into the tier 2 tower, tower from attack. Resolution. As the tier 1 does burn down from the Liquid Fire, Alliance will not overcommit for the push. Instead, they'll go top to make a defense. Bulldog TP's in, catches silent inside of a sprout. A lot of damage to follow up. The call down connects. But it just doesn't matter. Gyro falls and maybe always want to fly. He'll try to TP home oh. and he'll be successful in his plight. A one for nil trade, and Alliance will keep their top tier one tower standing. Yeah, they're going to take the stack, though. This is a pretty big stack, and uh, it's going to be a lot of gold going the way of Alliance. It looks like Solo wants to try to last hit a few of these with a Fisher, but there's the Macrofire. Plasma Field's there, but not available yet. So a little bit of back and forth with that, but they're just going to turn their attention to the top tier one, and we'll see if that's what they can lay claim to. Mm -hmm. Resolution still having a lot of space in the jungle here, stacking, pulling, killing, and using this beautiful positioning here from the Tinker, and as long as they can just keep delaying and minimize their losses, he will have a decent BOT timing, and they'll do just that as Solo comes around the backside, takes a stun from Misery, uses the Fissure to buy himself some time, but he is in some trouble. Stuck in the Sprout, max damage Plasma Field, and Chessie will get another kill here up on the scoreboard. That makes it 9-7, to seven, just shy of the 10-minute mark as the Lions do continue to gain some momentum. Call Down will be used here to clear up this Creep Wave a little bit and do some damage to those Bulldog Treants, but Ake is right there with the sustain. Two points in that Voodoo Restoration, helping him heal out just fine. Misery still trying to be sneaky around the backside, but low on mana does not have enough for a Storm Bolt or a Storm Hammer, if you will. But Empire doing a good job just buying their time right now, or biding their time, rather. Tower getting into Deny range, and they might be able to secure a Deny here, as it is quite yeah. low. We're seeing the, the timing of where this lineup wants to strike, but will they actually be able to get the last hit? No, Silent will deny the tower, and then he will fall with that stun connecting from Misery. So, Stampede came through. Uh, Mag doesn't really get to use it offensively. Everybody just in retreat, but the Sprout on Always Want to Fly, and he will go down as well. So, again, this is the timing that they want to go for with three points in Liquid Fire, with the War Cry, and with the a Witch Doctor's Voodoo Restoration. This is exactly when they just need to start taking towers. And uh, unfortunately, they don't get the first one, but maybe this tier two. We'll see it pressured pretty hard, but Dyer's obviously Empire looked to defend attack. it. Yeah, Glyph comes Dyer's out. It is just solo by himself, but Blink Dagger now picked up on the Centaur. Right around the 11 minute mark, not too shabby. A stray Macro Pyre will fly through. Won't do much as Bulldog gets hit by a Fissure, and that'll be enough for Alliance to sound the retreat, and they will head back to safety. BOT is now up on the Tinker. So he can start to come online a little bit, putting points in the heat-seeking missiles, and he's starting to get rather scary. That on top of the Blink Centaur means Empire are actually sort of in fighting form now. Silent does have Phase Boots Aquila and probably moving towards Drum of Endurance, has that first Bracer up, so he has some nice early fighting items here as well. Smoke from Alliance, they'll go in on to Always Wanna Fly, should be a pretty easy kill onto the Visage there. Yep, they'll bring him down, and now maybe they'll press into this tower. Empire will need to make a move to defend though. 
Yeah, they've got two arcane boots, so plenty of heal coming in from Ake, but the big deal here is Mag has his blink dagger. He smoked up, this is where things happen. Misery actually breaks through the smoke, so it's difficult to engage, but six seconds, they've got Stampede. They'll start on Misery, great burst damage, but he's all by himself. Yep, even with the Stampede coming up, he'll have it just in time. Another nice Fisher comes out, but the ultimate from Bulldog bounces around and will finish him off. Rockets from the Tinker flying through, but so far Ake just doing so much sustain. The Razor can't handle, or pardon me, the Visage, Visage can't handle the Razor, and it will be another two for nil trade. A lot of damage coming out onto Alliance, but they just can't bring anyone down. Fisher flies through and basically off the mark. Now Silent takes another Storm Bolt to the face, and he will be pushed back for now. Empire do hold their tower, but it doesn't come for free as they concede a couple of deaths. Yeah, the Visage right there was like really pinned down and tried to use the Soul Assumption onto Bulldog, but couldn't get it off for some reason. It, like he was in range as far as I could tell and had vision, but uh, in that timing, he was not able to get the return kill and therefore they only have seven kills on the table. When you're not at least trading one for one with a Visage, uh, there's there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of damage flying about, but they're not able to make the full use of it, and it's going to be slow going for this uh, gyrocopter in particular to build up. Like he needs a BKB to survive against most of the the chain stuns of Alliance, but right now he can barely afford the the drums. He's still working his way there. Yep. Sorry, I'm tending to a mod issue here very quickly, but uh, right back in it. So yeah, I mean, Alliance are doing okay now. They've got about a 4,000 gold lead. Experience graph is zeroed out, and I feel like Empire are actually doing a good job holding this. It doesn't feel like it since they have to keep conceding uh, hero dust to defend these towers, but end of the day, Alliance has only killed two towers in 14 minutes, and given how scary the pushing potential of their team is, I think Empire are, are hanging in there pretty well. Tinker already with 2,100 gold. He'll have a blink dagger coming up in a gif. Yeah. Still, the, the mid-game dominance of Alliance won't be limited to like the first 15 minutes like a lot of push lineups are. With this Sven, they can mitigate so much damage from the Gyrocopter and his Flag Cannon that they can just keep this push up for another 20 minutes unless Resolution really, really comes online. They're going to see big go. Stomp come Mag out from Mag. forward, Stampede connects on a few with the stun, but a big Ice Path from Loda. Isolates three, still two fall from Alliance to get things started. Down goes the Prophet. It's a great hold from Empire. And pardon me, the Prophet gets a kill on, on the Earthshaker. I don't know, I think the Alliance names are too long. It's throwing me for a loop here, Blaze. Mag presses forward, though, looking for the kill on Loda. Will bite off more than he can chew, and it will cost him his life. It's a two-for-two two exchange for now, but Silent looks like he won't survive too much longer. Turns, tries to drop the hammer on Chessie. As the Tinker BOTs in, at least buys him some time, and Resolution finds the turnaround kill. That makes it a three-for-three three now as Loda from the high ground, Ice Path, as well as the Macro Pyre, does some damage to Resolution, but not even close to bringing him down. And Alliance will continue to throw resources towards this mid lane as they're respawning. TP's forward. They really want to commit to this tower and at least find something to tip the scales and stop this from just being an even exchange and even a victory for Empire as their tower is still standing. They will get a familiar kill there. They push into the tower. This time it does go down and it's Witch Doctor that gets the last hit. Yeah. Now that the Blink is up on this tanker, he's going to be so much more of a nuisance. Blinking into trees, like I said, there's a couple ways to deal with it, but they're not always going to have the, the knowledge of his exact positioning or the ability to actually pin him down. So here, the tanker becomes a real menace, and Alliance has to step up their game. Even still, I like the lineup in general. The fact that they live through all that damage, that amazing mag stomp, for the most part, they only lost a few heroes there. It just shows how innately strong this lineup is at sustaining through fights. If uh, you can do that without a mechanism, imagine what you can do once Loda finishes it. Yeah, that's certainly a fair point in the top lane. Mag in some trouble here. Will pop his stampede, but takes a stun from Misery right away. Eating his way through the trees and just trying to juke long enough to get that blink dagger off cooldown. But Loda's right there with an the ice path, and that will be enough to bring him down. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, they do find a kill onto Chessy as Empire converge on him. And it's uh, essentially a one-for-one one across the map. Centaur for Razor, and it looks like neither team will be able to grab an objective. At least not quite yet. Ake is all alone down here and could get sandwiched upon if they scout him out. Top tier 2 tower taking some damage. Glyph flies through, but it looks like Empire will ultimately just let it fall as Macro Pyre clears up the creep wave. And tower goes down. Last hit goes to Mr. Bulldog. TP down bottom. They find always want to fly. Looking to TP out. Not happening. Gets interrupted by the stun from Sven. But now comes in the Tinker and Silent as well. They lose their Visage, and with that, they will just opt to retreat. 
Yep, so they do commit the death ward there, but that's not that big of a deal. Relatively short cooldown, and like we said, he's got a lot of mana to sustain with. So they're still going to keep their offensive momentum up, but where do they strike next? We've got a tier 2 at nearly full HP on the mid and bottom, and they do want to control Roche better. But Sprout will come out onto Solo. Don't think he should chase this, though, as Mag is just about to initiate. Oh, yeah, Bulldog's going to get taken down here, and even Loda not completely safe. Throws out a dual breath. Creates a little bit of space for his buddies. There's a rotation coming over from Mr. Misery, and he may get isolated here. They ping him out, and there is not so, too much support inbound. Double damage rune is down bottom. Alliance will be able to pick it up, and maybe they can use that to try and turn this fight around. Fissure flies through just barely off the mark as, uh, yep, Sven survives. Yeah. Lotus still holding on to his gold here. I guess he's just going to wait for the courier to come back, and yeah, now that as soon as the arcane boots make their way out to the front lines now they have to send the courier all the way back to get their mechanism which would be huge in this pickoff but instead mag just blinks away their smoke breaks they don't have a mech they can't just walk into roche so yeah they're at a little bit of a loss as to what to do here they have to kind of go back to their the lanes push the creep waves out and make sure that mech is put to full use mm -hmm. they actually uh bulldog could have even maybe ferried out the mechanism recipe but they're just gonna let the courier do the the dirty work here and it will take a little bit of time to make its way to the front lines yeah, and Bulldog is farming very impressively here. No Hanamitis on him, but he already has Blink Maelstrom and working on an Orchid with that Oblivion staff. Radiance Number one on net worth, actually staying attack. above the likes of the Tinker, which is just damn impressive. Level one Dagon is up on the Tinker now, though, and his farm is not looking too shabby either. As we'll see, Empire group up to defend this bottom tier two tower, and as soon as the Lions catches wind of Empire making a hold, they will just retreat. They rendezvous with the Courier, as you were talking about. And now they are in slightly better fighting form. Empire do not have a mech of their own, and they don't seem interested in one. Nobody building towards it, and well, that does put them at a small team fight disadvantage here. Silent looks like he will just be working straight towards a BKB. This is a pretty common build we see out of Silent. The phase boots, Aquila, drum, magic wand opener, then just into the BKB so he can survive through the mid game. Yeah, that's where he really needs to be at right now. Unfortunately, he's a little bit behind schedule, but he'll get there pretty quickly if they don't put some real pressure on him. As far as smokes go from the side of Alliance right now, they've broken all of theirs, and there is oh, there are two on the Courier. Okay, so not on the shop, but two coming out on the Courier, and they need to make the most use of those to keep pinning down the Tinker as well as the Gyrocopter. Tinker picks up Dagon 1, has a lot of kill potential even with that alone, and obviously the Gyrocopter is uh, the one they have to limit when it comes down to the late game. So right now Silent is farming up everything in the jungle. Still has pretty good control over that, and that's based on some great Observer Wards placed out by Empire. Yep, that is true. Momentum is slowing down here though, and that is not good news for Alliance. Just glancing at the graphs, their lead is kind of plateaued at about 5,000 gold, and I guess that sounds okay, but they have a pretty big tower advantage right now. They've taken down four towers, and Empire have only managed to kill one. So as soon as Empire take a good team fight and knock down these money bags, aka the tier 1 towers with pretty low HP still standing, that gold graph will, uh, will level out. And Empire are starting to find better farm around the map, about 2,000 experience in their favor. And I think that tells the state of this game maybe a little bit more clearly. Mm. Uh, Bulldog the, bait. Oh, pardon me? Bull, oh. Bulldog's baiting in mid. They're going to try to jump on him, but maybe they'll get to jump first. Solo with a nice fisher to disengage, and the stampede will come out in time. That would have been really good if they had gone on Bulldog, but the other way around. Yep, Bulldog, bl uh, TP's in onto Mag, but he will be able to go back to safety. Solo, not quite so lucky. Stuck in the Sprout, taking a lot of damage from the Eye of the Storm. Chessy will find a kill right there, but pretty minimal losses for Empire. Just a stray support at this stage in the game is uh, not going to make it or break it. Maybe Alliance can turn this into a push. They are grouping up in the mid and uh, will start to look towards this Tier 2 tower. But Empire moving in to make a defense, and they will pressure down bottom. Silent with forward positioning will take a stun from Misery. Bulldog TP's back in. Chessy as well, but Mag is right there. They'll drop the Bulldog. Link onto Silent. He will just move into the trees to TP home. Mag will do the same, and beautifully done by Empire. Sometimes the best defense is a good offense. Absolutely, and the f familiar movement here is really on point, so they can just use BOTs to control those uh, aggressive positions you wouldn't expect, and obviously just uh, getting that sneak play there. So very well done, puts them uh, to BKB on Silent. He's able to, on the back of that, just uh, get to his last little bit, and that's going to be huge. They can even consider Roshan at this point, because they do have the march kind of on the high ground, and they do have enough durability on the Gyrocopter now. But we'll see if that's... Uh, on their minds right now an illusion rune has spawned the bkb is here and uh, it looks like they might just uh push tier one instead 
Yes, indeed. And again, glancing at the graphs, it's still starting to topple in favor of Empire. And I feel like Alliance need to do something here. They need to take a good team fight, a smoke rotation, find some objectives. They're just losing momentum right now. And uh, with this kind of a snowballing lineup, that is never a good sign. Bulldog down bottom will almost get initiated upon, but blinks back to safety, utilizing that blink dagger, nature's profit, uh, to the fullest extent of its glory. Up top, resolution will come to the defense of the tier three tower as Chessie does start to press forward, working on either a BK. Never mind, working on a BKB, and now completed as it gets delivered uh, via the courier. Thought that might be the beginnings of an Ag scepter, but Chessie going for a little more of the carry route, just wants to survive to lay in those right clicks. Alliance will group up in the mid lane. Four points in the liquid fire. I mean, this tower will basically melt under the pressure, and it will go down pretty quickly. Empire have a glyph available, as do the radiant. Silent Radiant down bottom will be able to finish off that tower before TPing home. And Empire, I think, just hoping for a deny here as they don't really want to take a fight. Will be unsuccessful on that plight. Silent gets the bottom tier one, and Bulldog will secure the last hit on the tier two mid. That will take the total tower count now five to two in favor of Alliance. But Empire now breaking down some of these money bags. We see main yeah. map drawn by Alliance, and it looks like they will move through and try to take a fight in their jungle if Empire hang around. Lota just needs a lot more farm, a lot more quickly. Right now he's working on the Pipe of Insight, and they absolutely need that to break high ground against the Martian Machines, but it's going to take a little bit of time. If they mess up one fight, it'll just delay the pipe further, and soon enough, Tier 3 is just going to be un impossible to assail. Tinker is just getting really farmed really fast. He's very active across the map, and we've seen what Resolution can do in these situations. Just mm -hmm. lasers everywhere, uh, the marches to defend, and really no way to control him with their current draft. Yeah, Misery does have a lot of gold saved up, but he'll get hopped on right now. Mag hops forward, Silent with the call down, and Sven falls before the fight even starts. Resolution comes in. There is support from Alliance inbound. They will find a kill on the Centaur. Resolution gets silenced, and he will fall. It is a one for two as the Centaur does make, or pardon me, as uh, the Gyrocopter does make it out with his BKB. But uh, Alliance with a oh, little bit of a bait there, I suppose. Nicely done as they find the better exchange. Yeah, a little bit accidental, but it definitely works out, and especially that BKB cooldown is probably the hugest aspect of that. Uh, so, uh, really good combo. Even if he gets out, it still hurts him, and uh, they're actually looking to pick off a couple of familiars, too. Both of them will fall to Bulldog, plus 200 gold in the bank, and uh, that's resummons in about 30 seconds' time. So, even when Tinker respawns, he won't be able to, uh, I don't know, spread across the map as rapidly. Still, they're not really taking an objective on the back of those two kills. They're just, just kind of going back to farming, and I'm trying to figure out if they're ever going to be able to go into Roche, or if they're really just going to be hard farming that pipe of insight to finish it off. Hood is up, but still about uh, 1,300 gold until he's actually able to finish up the item itself. Yeah, and I mean, breaking high ground is certainly important in the context of Alliance, but even just taking a straight-up 5v5 fight, I feel like the pipe is really going to be an instrumental piece to that puzzle. We haven't really seen a full-on 5v5 clash, at least... Uh, not since we moved into the mid game here. It's mostly been these little 3v1s or 2v1 little skirmishes around the map and pickoffs here and there. But these huge 5v5 fights, so much magic damage on the side of Empire between the Gyro, the Tinker, and uh, basically everyone, all, everyone on that dire side has some sort of a, a big bit of magic damage they can put out. So we'll see if the pipe actually can be or is the item that will turn the tides in favor of Alliance. There is now a Blink Dagger up on Solo, so uh, the Earthshaker is a little bit more scary now, and of course is level 11, so the Slam Dunk hurts that much more and uh, makes the pipe that much more crucial. Even mm -hmm. Silent now working on probably an Oh no, Bulldog! A -B. Oh no, that's, <laughs> that's just unfortunate. That's some bad luck yeah. right there. They were smoked up, no way to know that the team was rotating into the jungle, but... That will be uh, probably the easiest kill Empire will find all game. Yeah, that was that was the worst TP you can possibly get. And I mean, it makes sense for him to go there, but uh, everybody off the map, it's very unfortunate that that just happened to be where he wandered. Now they get some good aggressive wards up. Uh, Roche has to be a key objective for both sides at this stage. Like, if either one of them could take it, they can guarantee either the ability to break the high ground or the ability to guarantee defense of it and drag this game out at least uh, six more minutes. So really important. We're going to see the smoke come through from Alliance. Maybe they'll get a, a pick off into a Roche, but they need the initiation first, and that's not really coming. Yeah, they do ping out solo, but again, he has a blink dagger, hopefully Radiant's finger on the trigger. And attack. if they break the smoke, he should be able to hop out back to safety. Loda does get scouted out by the familiar. Silent pops his BKB and says, I'm out of here, guys. Everybody run for it. And Empire will make the escape. 
Quick reactions from Silent, but he does survive. Unfortunately, that's another BKB charge. It's now down to eight seconds, and he hasn't really done anything with it other than not die. Yeah, that's true. Both of them were just for TPs alone, and this is a very, very important tool for him to actually stay through the entire fight. I guess they do have a lot of disables behind them with the couple of stone form stuns as well as the hoof stomp and the fisher, but my goodness, does this team have to be in point in creating space? Ake okay, going to go down a little bit too far on the front line to get the blink initiation, but Misery tries to turn it. Yep, and they'll go in on his solo. Chessie's here as well. Pops his ulti. BKB out on Misery, but solo with a force staff to the low ground. That'll keep him alive. BKB popped by Chessie as well, looking to finish off Resolution, but he'll move through the trees. He gets caught inside of an ice path, but surviving for now. A decent fissure to help shut things down, and Gyro will find the kill onto the spend. They also bring down the Bulldog as Resolution drops the hammer. Looking bad for Alliance here as they will lose their entire team low to the last survivor, but he will fall. It's a two for five trade. Sure, they finish off the Tinker, but certainly bad news for our Radiant side. And this area here proved to be the death of them. The beautiful four staff onto the low ground kept Silent alive just bare, or pardon me, kept Solo alive just barely. And that actually uh, allowed the Tinker to buy some time as well as he juked around the trees. Not the initiation yeah. that Alliance wanted. Alliance were so spread out in that fight. There was one Sven trying to dive Radiance through the March of the Machines and Gyrocopter just to get the last hit on a Visage. There were people just left and right, not knowing exactly who to focus. And there there seems to be a little bit of a, a lack of general focus on the side of Alliance. Like the coordination that a captain would usually bring. Uh, S4 obviously used to be their captain and no longer is on the team. So I, I feel like that might be what they're lacking is just a, a general point of emphasis where they get to say, okay, this is what we need to do. This is where we need to go. And this is who we need to kill immediately because right now they seem in disarray. Yeah, and it was sort of just a, an odd fight the way it started, where Ake was already dead. So they started off as a 4v5, then Misery charged in, popped his BKB and stunned, and it was one of those fights where it seemed like Alliance didn't really want to take it, but they felt that they were committed, and once they started fighting, retreat would have just been even worse than trying to take a fight and, and take some kills. But in a 5v4, I, I don't know. I feel like they should have just cut their losses and, and run for the hills. At the very least, just sacrifice Misery. End of the day, it's... Just a position for Sven, and um, instead it results in a team wipe. And as you talked about, delays the pipe that much more. Loda will complete it now. So actually, well, he's still one piece off. Needs that last ring of regen, but basically has the pipe. That fight, though, not helping the timing. Not at all. I mean, 30 minutes in, a pipe is still going to be good, but it's not what they intended for this lineup. If they give a Jakiro a number one position, you give him mechanism and pipe, by maybe 20, 25 minutes. So its entire point is to rush it out. And that would enable Chessie to stay on the front line, the Sven to really uh, stand and deliver as well. But in this case, they they aren't really fighting all as a single unit and the, the timing just feels a little bit off. So it's gonna be on Empire to just find one more pickoff with this Dagon Ethereal Blade and then Alliance wait another minute because the death timer and they can't go four man up into roast or high ground. So yep. it just, it, we see this trend st starting now where Alliance are going to have harder and harder times uh, getting all together and just making things work for them. Yeah. And as always, that good rule of thumb is when the uh, pushing strats tend to fall off and the carries really start to kick in. It was right around that 30 minute mark, which we're about to ding. And Silent now has his MKB complete. He's hitting pretty hard. That flat cannon will be scary in this team fight, as long as he can survive to get a couple of auto attacks off. He also did not use his BKB in that last fight. So it is still at that 8 second charge, which is kind of a big deal for him. And also Tinker, he's getting close to that critical mass. He's only at level 2 Dagon right now, but we saw the Ethereal Blade come out. And in that last fight, he was doing a lot of damage, dropping hammers left and right. And... I'm starting to worry for Alliance. I feel like it's almost in the hands of Empire to throw at this point. Maybe not quite, but Gold Lead is completely zeroed out. All of that early tower edge that Alliance had is dissipated, and Empire holding on to almost a 10,000 uh, experience lead now. Roche still standing, uncontested by both sides, but uh, as we brought up a few times now, will be an option certainly for Empire and maybe for Alliance if they can find a pickoff or two. In the meantime, I always want to fly. He's going to be farming up towards, I guess, an Agadim Scepter. He doesn't have any components, so it's going to be a long haul for him. But just finding some nice gold on the map for himself while everybody else is spread out otherwise. If they can just kind of play passive, fall back and farm, that's great. But they do need to get a few more wards up to, to kind of guarantee that. Right now, there are wards in stock and available, but nobody's picking them up. And there's only one with uh, about one minute left on it on the map right now. 
Yep, and it is the one right outside of the Roche pit here, scouting out that invisibility rune. I reckon somebody will want to get those wards down sooner rather than later, though Earthshaker focused on his items right now, just finished up his Force Staff. Uh, joining his buddy Centaur, I guess, the Force Staff Blink Dagger brothers. So they can hop in and hop out and hopefully survive the onslaught after initiating. Centaur very close to level 16 as well and makes that stampede a little more potent, but most importantly lowers that cooldown. So he'll have it up pretty much every time that he needs it. Top lane, Silent baiting a little bit here as Mag hides in the tree line, hoping that uh, someone from Alliance will overstep their bounds. Maybe Bulldog will blink forward or something looking for a kill and they can turn it around, but they will not fall for the bait, and Silent will just move into the tree line here. Top tower now maybe they'll bait attack. with the Tinker instead. Razor will pick up his Ag Scepter following the BKB, so a little bit of extra pushing prowess for Alliance, and does help him tank up a little bit, but Chessy just, I don't know, hasn't been able to really have that huge impact that we often see with Razors um, when they go for that Ag's Refresher build, and they just knock towers down left and right. Yeah. And we're really just going in blind against this one, though. I'm kind of surprised at how aggressive they're being, considering they have absolutely no vision during the nighttime. They don't know what's lurking around any corner, and it could be very dangerous. I, I guess they're hesitant to drop the Observer Wards in plain sight because of the Gemma True Sight that's on Alliance, but even then, you have to see things. When you're being this active, you have to see it coming. You have to be able to maneuver against it. Fortunately for them, Alliance is being very transparent in their objectives. They're going for this Tier 2 bottom. Yep, and it will be a successful push, it looks like. Yeah, the glyph comes out, Chessy with the Eye of the Storm laying into the tower, and it will fall uncontested, not even a deny attempt. They will instead make a hold for the high ground, and Alliance will not even go for it. They'll just back out, and they will defend the Tier 2 in the top lane here as the rest of Empire TP out to the base. So it ends up just being a Tier 2 tower for free on the side of Alliance. And at this stage in the game, certainly not bad for them, but nothing game-breaking and will just kind of plateau the game that much more. But now they do at least have a very nice ward up here. It's unlikely that Sven will be making his way that direction anytime soon. So this very active, aggressive ward is going to allow Tinker to continuously just go on the, this western front inside these trees and pretty much have no care in the world. If he sees a low HP enough target, then he'll go for the Dagon blade combo. But otherwise, the march spam just continues. Yep, and still on just the level 2 Dagon, but now 2,500 gold up on him. So getting to that point where you need to pull for buyback, and we'll start to upgrade that Dagon slowly but surely. Silent with another 2,500 gold up on him as well. MKB still the last item that he grabbed in the inventory, but um, still farming quite nicely. Centaur on his way to a BKB, and oh, we already saw resolution here. It looks like they're angling around the Roche pit, but Empire still being very, very cautious. Oh, pardon me, on that front. Visage is now level 11 and does have the Ag Scepter, or pardon me, the uh, Ogre Club. So only 1800 off the Ag Scepter, but at least has the two tanky components, so he will have a slightly larger HP pool to play around with. So, really, Alliance seem to make something happen very shortly. The game goes to 40 minutes, and there's very small chances of them actually picking up the pieces. Obviously, we've seen Bulldog rat his way out of worse situations, but even still, the entire point is for them to be able to take objectives as five to get better control. Uh, the pipe is what was necessary to beat out the, the damage from the tinker, but on top of that, now they're worrying about the Earthshaker, the gyrocopter is getting pretty huge, and I don't think Warcry pipe is going to be enough in a very short span of time. Yeah, I'm not so sure it will be either. Uh, since they picked up the pipe, Ooh. they haven't really been able to do much. Nice really. snipe down bottom. They get yeah. both familiars, and those are on, still on cooldown for 30 more seconds. Yep, nice little 200 gold bounty going the way of Alliance, and Radiance I think more importantly, tower. stopping it's Resolution from uh, having those easy TP targets. But Silent and Resolution are in pretty deep right now, doing some decent decent damage to this Tier 2 tower, but Alliance are ready to take a fight if uh, they overcommit and give a good opening, though. Wrap around from Mag could commence. Blink Dagger and Stampede at the ready. He does get pinged out. They have a little bit of vision of him here. And with that alliance, we'll just back out and avoid getting jumped upon by Mr. Centaur. Yeah. I actually really love Empire's uh, anti-gem wards. Essentially, we are already talked about the one that's on top lane that can't be really scouted because the Sven doesn't have any reason to be there. But look at this one right here. You don't see that in any way walking by. You have to, like, have somebody... I don't even know. Like, you have to have clear vision, essentially, yeah, to see Fly that. the courier overhead or have a storm spirit, eat the trees just randomly, take mm -hmm. a fight there and have the macro pyre do a little deforestation. Basically, just luck. <laughs> it's the only way you're going to find that ward, I think. Yeah. 
And uh, that's a pretty Radiant common path to take to try to contest Roshan and things of that nature. So um, still gives them some good information Radiant and at no cost to fallen. themselves. We hear BKB come out. That's going to be silent when he gets caught inside the sprout. But again, just teething away with it. That's the third time he's used it that way. And uh, maybe at this time at the cost of Mag, no. Four Staff Stampede. It's a cooldown, but not the longest one. So he'll be able to just skedaddle on out of there. However, Admiral Bulldog has been farming quite significantly. I will spend a hefty sum of gold here, but... We'll pick up the Scythe of Ice and add in a lot more potential for his team fight. Yep, and right now Bulldog is really playing that kind of uh, semi-carry role, honestly, with mm -hmm. uh, the Orchid as well as the Scythe of Ice. His right clicks are pretty damn hard, and with the Maelstrom, he does uh, auto-attack rather fast, hitting for over 200 to pop with quite a bit of utility, nice. the Silence and the Hex as well. So good news for Alliance on that front. They will smoke up and rotate through the jungle. Misery does have a Blink Dagger now to go with his BKB, so... He is also hasted up. He's in the front lines looking for the initiation. We will see Empire now move into the Roche Pit. And good timing uh, from the perspective of Alliance as they are already smoked up. They'll move over. Misery in the front lines will connect with a stun onto Mag. He does have Stampede up in just a couple of seconds. Empire will try to leave the pit. Death Ward flies through, but the rest of Empire trying to get out of the fray. Visage will be the first to go down. Silent now pressing forward. Does have his BKB up. Pops it right in the front lines. Will do as much damage as he can. Laying into Alliance, but they can't focus anyone down. Mag falls to Chessy off around the other side. Now Silent loses his BKB, and he will fall as Misery throws a stun. Or will he? Bulldog hops forward and does finish him off. And it's a one for three trade. Not looking so hot for Empire. Now Solo in the front lines. Will get caught in the ice path. Make it a one for four. Now there's a buyback on the gyro. And Empire will continue to contest Roshan if Alliance move into the pit. That was a very well-timed engagement from Alliance and getting everything they needed out of it. Even with a good delay Fisher, they were still able to commit their abilities over it, like the Death Ward, still hitting really hard, and Empire just fell by the wayside. The Tinker tried to do what he could with his E-Blade Dagon, but the pipe was enough to nullify that, and the Echo Slam came out really, really late in the fight. So, all in all, great focus fire, and Alliance will pull ahead in that regard. I'm so, uh... A little surprised that Silent balked back there. Yeah, I think he thought the fight would last a lot longer. Obviously, with the Tinker, he can rebound in the fight by just juicing up at the fountain real quick. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they probably would have been in, like, a 3v4 scenario. And it, it's very unlikely for them to feel confident in that with the BKB on CD. Yeah, so just glancing at the graphs, a big swing of uh, momentum back in the way of Alliance after this long stalemate here. But they're still not out of the clear, or into the clear, I guess I should say. Uh, level 4 Dagon up on old Tinky, still plenty of gold for buyback. And even Gyrocopter working on a butterfly, has that value evasion piece, the talisman. And a smart pickup here because there isn't really a natural MKB carrier. I guess Bulldog makes the most sense for it to lay in the right clicks, but all things considered, that evasion will really help him out here against the Sven as well as the Razor, who will be commencing some physical attacks. Yeah, the Razor really isn't as farmed as you'd like him to be in this situation. Though, like you said, Bulldog's kind of got it more on his shoulders than anything else. Because, uh, oh, okay, nice little pick up on the Earthshaker there. Jumping in, stunning it out. And, uh, of course, Sheepstick, a great initiation tool on a any hero with a Blink Dagger. But, in particular, one with uh, a global mobility oh, spell as well. Oh, mid lane. Mag, maybe biting off more than he can chew here. A call down flies through, but it just doesn't matter. Centaur goes down. Now Resolution on the back foot. Macro Pyre goes out. But Resolution will be in some trouble here. Bulldog does TP towards the mid lane. Resolution dropping the hammer onto Chessie, doing a lot of damage, but the Eye of the Storm is just too much. Even a Maledict coming out. They'll find the kill on Tinker, and it's a double for Chessie. Oh, boy. It looked like Empire were going to start to take this game, but all of a sudden, they're losing all of their footing here, and that's a 3 for nil exchange across the map, and Alliance will move right into the Roche Pit. And it should fall uncontested. Empire just simply don't have the resources to move in and stop this. Yeah, nice pick off there, and the fact that they committed so hard to that mid lane fight after not having the Earthshaker able to contribute, and the, the fact that the pipe is still doing wonders against the tanker, even though he's about to hit up Dagon 5, it's just uh, keeping Alliance in it, it's keeping them fighting, and now they even have the Refresher Orb on the Razor. Now, he isn't the Aegis carrier in this case, they did give it to the Sven, and uh, I kind of find that to be an interesting decision, but of course, Chessie wasn't really positioned to flame it. Yeah, a lot, or pardon me, Silent in some trouble here. He will get hexed up, silenced up, and just fall to the crowd controls of old Mr. Bulldog there. And they'll find another free kill uh, on Silent. A long respawn timer on him as uh, his last death was uh, followed up by a buyback there. But I did want to comment on the Sven. This is another one of these kind of games where even though Sven started as a support, he's got enough farm now that he can kind of turn into a carry. Just the BKB blink alone is enough to 
uh, make him kind of scary when he pops that God Strength down in the bottom lane. Solo blinks forward, connects with the dunk. Mag comes in as well, but he pops the BKB. Tries to go hard onto Solo. That will waste the Aegis. And maybe they can pick up another kill here. The March of the Machine flying through. No Blink Dagger for you. They've got more than enough burst to bring him down before Alliance can react. And now it's Empire that find the free kill. And that is an Aegis wasted. Yeah, very, very unfortunate to lose him twice over. Now Mag trying to jump onto Bulldog, but too quick with the Blink. It, he isn't even afflicted by the Stampede, so in a really good position to just disengage in full, but I guess with the Gyrocopter down for full 40, no buyback, they seem to want to force it. They say, okay, the Sven, he is nice, but unnecessary. We'll go for it. Oh, Bulldog takes a lot of burst damage there. The gem hits the deck, but nobody picks it up as the Familiars come down. Okay, pressing forward. Mag with his BKB on just can't sur uh, survive the Wrath of the Razor. And it will be a one-for-one one trade here. The difference is buyback comes out onto the Bulldog. He can TP right back into the fray, and they will go in for this tower. Ice Path connects onto Solo. Glyph has already been used, and this tower is in some trouble. Resolution gets picked off now. we got to look at the buyback chart. Tinker does not have it. He's short gold, and this is what Alliance were waiting for. Tier 3 tower falls. The Glyph is not available, and this will be a dead lane of racks. Chessy has the Eye of the Storm on. He's already used his Refresher. And this is looking grim for the dire side. Always want to fly. Will get caught out now. Takes a Maledict. He'll fall to the dots. Double kill now for the Bulldog. It's just silent versus all five of Alliance. And yeah. they may lose more than one lane of racks here. There was a gem still down, and it's still just sitting on the ground, but Alliance don't care. They'll just go straight for the base. Again, no glyph, no buybacks. Is this game here, Blaze? Is this actually it? Potentially. I mean, the double eye of the storm just railed through the mid lane, so now on top of trying to force Gyrocopter to overcommit. If they can get him with a quick blink hex, then they can just pin him down and uh, seal this one for good. But instead, Silent goes as safe a position as possible, which is outside his own base. He knows that he can't defend the top lane, and actually he's going to get TP'd on. This could be dangerous even here. Yep. Bulldog moves into the tree line. Sprout. And will blink forward. Does find the hex. Finds the Silence. Misery's there with the stun. See ya, Silent. And that's a dead Real. gyrocopter. The rest of Empire starting to come up, but with him down, they know he doesn't have a buyback. They'll be able to press forward. No gyro, no glyph. This is bad news, Bears, for Empire. They are one lane of racks away from Mega Creeps, and that will certainly be their demise. Misery in the front lines. Tier 3 tower goes down. Empire have to hop forward now. This is it. It's now or never. E-Blade out onto Misery, but the follow-up just isn't there. Pipe gets deployed, and that's it, Blaze. Mega Creeps will come out. Mag hops forward, BKB on, Stampede at the ready, but even if Alliance get wiped up here, the Mega Creeps have come, and that is what they got. That, that is what they wanted, and they will find it. Loda on the back foot now, Mag trying to chase the Bulldog, but even as Alliance are retreating, Empire struggling to find kills here. They will pick yeah. off the Prophet as well as the Witch Doctor. Loda will probably fall as well as the Tinker comes in. E-Blade, Dagon, Fissure to bring him down, and they will get three kills as a small consolation. But their base is in shambles, and that'll be it. Empire just taps out. What yeah, a game. Solo was trying to get that slam the entire friggin' fight, but they piped at one point, they split up the rest, and he Look just couldn't get anything. Look at that experience graph. Oh my gosh. Wow. Even, 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 way in favor of Empire, then all of a sudden, Alliance just come back with it. What yeah, a game. I, it seemed like Empire was really going to be able to take it, but it was just that series of, of pickoffs that really the buyback, I think, is what did it for Empire. Silent mm -hmm. bought back, didn't get anything out of it, and then when he needed it in that next team fight, he was stuck in the grave, and the rest of Empire couldn't do enough damage without him. They kind of got picked off one at a time, and by the time Silent respawned, that was it. The base was already crippled. Yeah, he spent so much time in that western tree line that I really don't know exactly what he was expecting to accomplish, especially with buyback off cooldown. That was a critical error. They exploit it, and they are able to push through very nicely done. As far as the Tinker's economy, it was pretty much in shambles. He was like 3-5 and now 13 with an assist or two at the very end of it. But like when he bought out the Ethereal Blade, he spent all his reliable gold, and since then didn't get, even get enough for a single buyback. So uh, Resolution just really didn't have the economy he needed to to participate with two full lives, and they were able to exploit that as well. Gyrocopter, Tinker, just not being able to hold their own in the late game, and Admiral Bulldog with the Blink, Sheep, Pickoffs. That, with the Eye of the Storm times two, is enough to seal the deal and what looked like a very shaky mid-game for Alliance turns out to be a resounding victory. Mm-hmm.
So guys, we'll have a very short break here, and coming up will be our final match of the day, Alliance versus Team Tinker, the big kahuna. Alliance feeling hot off their win over Empire. We'll see if that carries over into their next match against uh, Team Arino, Tinkerino. I'm Zayori Solo in the studio, joined by Blaze. You can follow us both on Twitter, at Zayori TV, at BlazeCast. You can, of course, at Beyond the Summit to stay up to date with all things happening here in the studio. Thank you for joining us for Star Ladder Season 10 EU Day 10 coverage. We'll be back after this short break with one more match.